I'm going to teach you about a woman named Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman is a slave born in Dorchester, Maryland. As soon as she could walk, her owner hired her out, and so she went and had to check muskrat, muskrat traps in nearby marshes. When she was older, she was running errands. Then a slave tried to run away, so the owner threw a lead chunk at the slave, but hit her instead. She was badly injured and had to go home. When she got home, her mother had to get a piece of the lead chunk out of her head. After that, she sometimes fell, fell asleep. If she was talking to someone, she would sometimes fall asleep. Like if she was talking, she would fall asleep, wake up, finish the sentence like nothing happened. One day, she got sick and tired of having to work and wishing to be free. So she escaped and made it to Pennsylvania where she got she got there. She got some jobs as a nurse, activist, spy, and a writer. And when she got enough money, she went back for her family. She became a conductor of the Underground Railroad on March 10th, 1913, Harriet dies in, in Auburn, New York. Hello guys, my name is Tanner Henry Elliott. I'm going to teach you about Grace Hopper. She was born on December 9th, 1906 at New York, New York. She had two siblings, a brother and a sister, Roger and Mary Murray. Her parents were Walter and Mary Murray. When she was young, she when Grace Hopper was young, she loved to learn. She took apart seven of her her parents' alarm clocks. When her parents figured out, they took six back and put and gave, let her keep one to test with. And when she was done with it, she put it right to, back together how it was. At the age of 16, she graduated from Vassar College with honors in mathematics and physics. And then she went to Yale University to get a master's degree, while she already had a bachelor's. Then she had two more degrees, and she got mathematics and physics. And in 1930, she got married to uh, Vincent, I forgot his middle name, Foster, um, Hopper. Yeah, I forgot his name for a little She wanted first to work at, well, she did work at Vassar College as a teacher in mathematics. Then she wanted to join the Navy, but she got rejected a couple times. Then they accept her in waves. Sorry, I forgot what it means, so I, I can't tell you. She was the first one to complete her session in the waves at Massachusetts, I think, or Manhattan. Then the Navy sent her to Harvard University to work with the first digital computer, the Mark I. It helped solve equations for the Army in World War II. At the age of 60, she retired but she came back because the Navy told her she still had work to do. So she worked for the Navy another 19 years. Then she finally retired at age 79. She died at Arlington, Virginia, 1992, January 1st. She is buried at Arlington National Cemetery. Here are some, fa some fun facts I learned. She was an awesome computer scientist. She worked with the Univac One that was the first comp digital computer to be sold to businesses. And she was called Amazing Grace because all the accomplishments she got at the, at the time women, it would have been hard to get with for women. Usually back then men would get all the rewards.
Hello, my name is Sabrina, and um, we picked um, famous women, um, and I picked Jane Goodall, okay? And basically, I'm going to tell you about her. So, I'm going to show you some pictures first. Um, so, the first picture is when her dad gave her jewelry. <laughs> Um, Jewelby is a stuffed animal. She's a chimpanzee. Um, the second picture I'm going to show you is of, um, Jane. Um, she's playing with Jewelby out in the backyard. Um, then we have, um, Jane and Jewelby watching squirrels go up the tree. Then we have Jane, or Jane, like making a collection there with Jolby, of course. And then here's the Alligator Society. It's a club with Jane Goodall in it. And then here's her hiding and waiting for a hen because she was curious about how they laid eggs. Then she decided, let's hide in the straw and wait. Then, finally, she found what she was looking for, it laid an egg. Then she is um, playing in the yard with chicks. And then here, she is climbing a tree with Jewelby, and then reading in a tree. And another picture of her reading in a tree. And she's imagining while she's reading in a tree. And now she's imagining that she is swinging for the jungle. And then she tuck in Julian and getting into bed. And falling asleep. Then she is a teenager in Africa now. Well, grown up. And then here's a picture of her as a grown up with one of the baby chimps. And then here is a picture of her now. 87 years old is how old she is now. Um, yeah, she's still alive. And she basically started this society called Roots and Shoots. Or Shoots and Roots. I don't really know. Um, about where kids all around the world um, basically replant trees. And it's cool because we can all help in nature. And um, she basically opened, um, basically, she opened sanctuaries for chimps. And she got her job from Dr. Leakey right here. Um, he was impressed how, impressed how much Jane knew. So she gave her the job. And, and basically she is still alive and she go to convention and stuff and stuff. Um she loves animals so she is a vegan which means she doesn't eat meat, and she also doesn't eat eggs. Um, she also um, still visits the chimps. Um, she was the first woman scientist. Um, she also um, discovered that chimps ate meat and used tools. We Back then, we thought um, we were on the only ones who used tools, but we were wrong, and we found out 
that chimps are our closest re- relative. Chimps are not monkeys. They're basically like, um, like tailless monkeys, but they're not monkeys. Here's like some pictures of chimps. They look way, 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 way different. Um, yeah. But, bye. Hello, today I'm going to teach you about a woman named Temple Grandin. Temple was born on August 29, 1947 in Boston, Massachusetts. Her mother, Estacia, was a writer, singer, and an actress. Her father, Richard, was a real estate agent. Temple was born with autism. That made her mind work differently. Um, so we later find out why, like how. Um, as a child, Temple never liked smelly perfumes, whistling tea kettles, bright lights, scratchy socks, or hugs. In fact, whenever someone were to give her a hug, she felt like she was trapped in a big scratchy sock. Um, whenever she went to grade school, she went to um, Deham Country Day School. Um, Whenever she was in seventh through ninth grade, she was in um, Beaver Country Day School. And then whenever she went off to college, she made a machine that gave her a hug so that people wouldn't have to. And then later on, um, people were able to give her a hug. So here's a picture of her hug machine. And then she's interviewing someone in that picture. Um, And then in college, she um, earned not one, but three degrees. Um, And then HBO made a movie about her called Temple Grandin. Um, And it had Claire Danes in it. Um, so, and then she published hundreds of scientific papers, um, and many books. In fact, she wrote her first book to help Katherine Johnson. Um, if you don't know who Katherine Johnson is, she's a, um, mathematician for, um, NASA. So the reason Temple's so famous is she is known for her autism because she she was four before she ever learned to um like talk or even said her first word um and her being an animal expert a scientist and she's also a teacher um. She is also a spokesperson. So today I'm going to be telling you about a woman named Helen Keller. Helen was born on June 27, 1880. She lived in Scumbia, Alabama. When Helen was just 19 months old, she became very ill, but after not too long, she um, got better. Even so, she did get better. She never regained her hearing or eyesight ever again. Helen complained and kicked and screamed and threw tantrums, and nobody understood what she was trying to tell anybody. After a while, her mother realized that Helen has been, has lost both her hearing and sight. But soon after, her parents met a woman named Anne Sullivan. Helen and Anne uh, worked for many years to learn words, but 
when Helen was seven years old, they finally figured out the best way to learn new words. Anne Sullivan poured cold water over Helen's hands and spelt out the word water with sign language. This method made Helen have a connection to the words. That night, Helen learned, learned 30 new words by the 30 new words in the same way. In 1900, Helen became the first and deaf first deaf and blind person to to graduate from college. Helen, Helen started sharing her experiences through public talks and by helping other helping other disabled people. Helen published six books and won many awards in her lifetime. She traveled all over the world giving speeches and words of encouragement. In 1964, President Johnson awarded Helen with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Helen overcame difficult conditions and went on to become an inspiration leader who helped many people all around the world. One of Helen's famous quotes is, but the most beautiful things can't be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. I think that's. I think it means that she's trying to spread awareness that you don't need to be able to see or you don't need to be able to hear to to have something beautiful. Helen said, "If she had the choice, if she if she wasn't blind or deaf." she would immediately go get a husband. Today I'm gonna to be telling you and doing facts about Princess Diana. First, Princess Diana was born on July 1st, 1961. She was raised at Arthur P. House in North Hampshire. Princess Diana's dad was John Spencer and her mother, was Frances Shane Kai. She had a brother named uh, uh, Chance and her two sisters, Sarah and Jane. Um, she was athletic. She enjoyed playing sports. Princess Diana had a nickname, Destiny D. Uh, she had hamsters, guinea pig, and a cat named Marble. And her uh, cat was like her thing before she was a yeah, mother and stuff. Princess Diana was nine when she went to Widowsworth Hall, an all-girls boarding school. I would have got along with young Diana just because we have similar interests and stuff. Um, princess Diana's adult life was hard because she was the princess, but the reasons that it was hard is because she, uh, she was a princess. But she had to like uh, be good to her citizens and her country, and then she had her jobs to do like with her citizens and her country. But then she was also a preschool helper. Um, uh, Princess Diana got married in 1981 at the age of 20. Uh, she was married to Prince Charles for 15 years. It's not that long. Um, and then they had two sons, William and Harry. Princess Diana supported by her sons. Um, like she was very supportive and all of that. Um, Princess Diana had two um, famous quotes. One was, anywhere she saw suffering, she would go there doing what she can. And that means if she saw like anyone that was hurt or like she would help them and go over there and do what she can. And she had another one uh, that was lead from the heart, not the head. So that kind of means like she had a big, loving, open heart and she always led from the heart. So what was best? Um, Princess Diana uh, died on August 31st, 1997. Princess Diana was um, a good, loving, and kind. She died way too soon. We all miss her. 
and the thing is Princess Diana died on August 31st, 1997, and was born on July 1st, 1961. So I'm going to be showing you some uh, pictures of Princess Diana. So this is her son, with her son. This is the book. And um, as you can see here, she's really pretty and stuff. Like really, really pretty. She has her crown, her earrings, and everything. Uh, this is her with um, Prince uh, Charles, William, and Harry. That's where William and Harry when uh, they were younger. And then um, she was very supportive about her sons. And as you can tell on here, she's taking her son. And the caption actually says, I want to be a police officer to keep you safe, Mommy. That's what it says. Because uh, Prince William said that because, you know, they were one big happy family and stuff. Um, let's see here. And then uh, where they were on track and stuff. And then it says, I want to bring them up with security, a hug with children to death. So, yeah. And then this is at another cross country. It says, I will fight for my children on my any level in order for them to be happy and have peace of mind and carry out their duties. And this is when them when uh they went uh skiing on the snow. Um this was Prince Princess Diana when she got married in her wedding dress with uh Prince Charles. Prince Charles of the Wales. Um and this is them. Uh, I remember thinking great fun and bouncing and full of life, Prince Charles. So Prince Charles right now is actually still alive, but Princess Diana, um, she died in New York because she got in a terrible car accident and just never came back. Actually, no. Princess Diana, Prince Charles, and the driver died, actually, so. And only is left is remaining of the sons. So this is them just in regular photos. And it says, I desperately love my husband, and I wanted to share everything together. I thought that we were a very good team. And these are are also some really cool pictures of Prince Charles and Princess Diana. Um, also her, she was very uh, popular, not just because she was a princess, but um, a lot of people relied on her and she was very helpful to people and people really loved her. And that's why they uh, missed her today. Um, this is her laughing, apparently. Um, your wonderful, uh, sense of humor with the laugh that bent you double. This was Errol Spencer's Diana's brother. And then she would always help, like here, she would help kids in need. She would help kids in need kids in need whenever they need help and stuff so as you can see like in this one she's carrying them and then like shit and sh just helping people to make them feel better when they're like in the hospital or just normal places um this is her when she did her american red cross as you can see it says it right there um it says I've got my work that I chose to do, and I've got my boys. And then the last page was Princess Diana's death. So this was her um, thing.
all the soldiers or whatever you want to call them, knights, whatever, were carrying um, Princess Diana's uh, crate. And that's when she passed away. So I hope you like the facts about Princess Diana and I'll see you next time. Hi guys, um, what I did today is one about women that is um, famous, and what I picked is Amelia Earhart, and um, I have to tell about the life of Charlie around her school, and I have a little book here that I will show you a few pages off. So let's get into it. Mila was born on June 24, 1897 in Kansas, Texas. Mila had a younger sister, Muriel. Amelia's parents were Amelia and Samuel Earhart. Mayo spent a lot of her childhood playing with her younger sister. They had they had adventures. They played baseball and basketball. They explored caves. She once built a roof for her backyard. Oh, um, um, Amelia attended many different schools because their family moved a lot. So I'm going to do now is that I'm going to, going to show you this book. Okay, I'm going to show you a few pages in this book. I'm going to give you a few pages that I will change. Okay. Yeah, I did ten minutes. Seven sessions. When Mia was, yeah, I know. When Mia was a little girl, she liked to imagine and she could reach her wings like and fly like a bird. Here's another page. This is at an air show. Uh, when she was older, she went to an air show. The plane soared into the sky, leaving me on the ground. She wished she could go with them and see what they saw. So you can the pages now and go finish this. She attended Hyde Park High School in Chicago in 1911. Okay, I'm going to show you one more page of this book. Oh, I'll show you after our page. She got a ride in an airplane and liked it so much she didn't want to ever come down. That is my good video. Bye! Hello guys, and we're going to get a friend in your life. Betty White. This is for the Women's History Project, and we're talking about the women's leaders, and I have Betty White. So today, we're going to start learning about Betty White. Betty White was a very funny actress and producer. She had lots of trophies, like this one, named Tyler Moore and Ted, Night of the um, Trophies at the Night at the 1976 Emmy Awards. Well, that's pretty useful. That's a lot.
This is also her first show that she ever played in, the Mary Tyler Moore show. So, okay. So, you know the Golden Girls, if you do, you can look like Betty White, because Betty White played in the Golden Girls. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Betty White is awesome. Like, speaking about the, she did play in like a lot of movies. She played in Two Story Four. She played in Donnie and Mary in 1976. The Diane Carroll Show in 1976 too. The Rich Little Show. You know what that was in? Same as last year. 1976. Okay, the Carol Burnett show was 1977. The Dean Martin Celebration Roast was 1978. The Jackson's was the same as the first one that I said, 1977. The Sony and Cheer show, 1977. The Love Boat. In 1986. Well, those are all the movies that she played in. Well, not all of them, because I got more for you. State Elsewhere. She played in State Elsewhere. In 1985, The Magical World of Disney in 1988, Bob Hope, The First 90 Years, 1993, Chance of a Lifetime, 1991, Bob, 1992, Maybe This Time, 1995, Family Season, 1990. That 70s show, 2002. Alan McNeil, 1999. And those are the movies that she was in the zip line thing. And the hot air balloon she was going for shooting was Chance of a Lifetime, 1991. This made for TV movie. And like as a woman with months to live. Who finds adventure in the movie? Hmm. He played the ladies' man in 1999. The TV World Awards 2007. The Ellen Show in 2001. Providence in 2002. Sunday Christmas in 2003. The Practice 2004. Joey, 2005. Boston Legal, 206. Right, 2006. The Bold and the Beautiful in 2006. My name is Alan, which is a winner of the show. In 2009. Baby Rock, 2009. That's what I just said. What are the names? He had lots of pets. Like a lot of pets. Like a lot of pets. She played in Two Story Four. And I don't know what time, but sometime. She also played in the Lorex in 2012 when I was born. And she played in Toy Story, which she played as the lion toy in two, Toy Story 4. And, well, that's the end. Thank you guys for watching. So, um, this is my fifth word about my women's history project. I was researching Dolly Parton, 
She's the country music story. She has tried in movies. And, and she's written books and read them. She has um, a, she has a theme park called, called Dollywood. She has a library called Imagination Library. She was born, uh, born at Civic County in Tennessee, <laughs> in Tennessee, on January 19, 1946. She, uh, she is 76 now. After, uh, after the doctor who came to deliver Dolly, it was finished cleaning her up and everything he was paid with a bag of oatmeal. She had three older siblings and eight younger siblings. Well, in Minsley School burned down when she was little, uh, little, no one was in it, in it but uh, she had to go to a different one that was farther. In her new school, she would, uh, uh, she would be bullied a lot. That Carl Jean, her husband at 18, got married two years later. And without telling anyone, and 15 years after they got married the first time, they got married That's again. And it had my dad, and she is my resilience. She's got her godmother. She's been singing since she was 10. She's had Dollywood for no. 61 years. She's she thinks famous songs like Zoween and Blue Smoke. She wrote music, made a theme park called Dollywood, wrote and read books. She's acted in many movies. So now in this portion of the video, I'll be showing you um, pictures of Dolly. Um, so here's a picture with her standing next to two other women. Um, and This was for a movie called American Suicide. Dolly uh, Dolly Fight in her breakout role as a seven. Yeah, seven five uh, five quickly working in the big city. So I won't have time to read the captions of all of these pictures because some of them can get pretty long. Like when I first went through them, so I will make sure to show you all of them now.
so I'm like, it's a video, I'm going to do a video, but, um, I'm going to get reading again, so I can finish it up. Dolly opened Imagination Library in 1995. She wrote more than a thousand songs. In four years, she wrote a hundred songs. Dolina was based off of the big tower. Dolly used to be a waitress. Her family is very passionate about music. Her uncle gave her her first guitar. Her music partner died in 2020. She got married twice to the same man without a voice. She loves kids but doesn't have any. Her siblings are musicians too. Okay, now that we got past most of those, we can get back to that. I can get back to showing you the things. I'm sorry, guys, but he um, tried to boy and we left off. And it's going to be a second for the podcast on the local. So now I have a couple of my facts about Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton first went on the radio when she was 10, but she's been singing long before that. Her elementary school burned down in. Never mind, sorry, I actually did that one already. She had a high school education. She once, uh, once cut her foot so badly her toes were barely hanging on. So, most of all of my facts, so I guess this must be a different video. Marie Curie was born in Poland November 7th, 1867. Marie was the youngest of five children. The Russian government ruled Poland. When she was young, she. Her most prized for pres- possession was um, her dad's um, glass box with um, scientific instruments. Instruments are like, um, they are like tools. Um, her mother died when she, when she was very young. She was the youngest of five children. Um, there was three, or four girls, four girls and one boy, including her.
Okay. She, um, uh, when she was a little girl, she was in class and they were and they were teaching in Polish. Wait, before I start telling you this, um, back then they, since um, the Russian guards would run the halls and they'd have to teach classes in Russian, but when they weren't working, they would teach classes classes in Polish. Okay, so one time they, um, they were, a teacher was teaching a class in Polish, and the and then the um, Russian guard started walking by, and he, and Marie was told to answer some questions, and she did. Now I'm going to tell you about her education. So the first she went to was the Flying University, which is a school meant for meant for only girls. But wait, is a school meant for boys and girls? But it was a hidden school. And at the Flying University, she was the top the top of her class. Then she went to a place called the Stubborn, um, and and before this she tried to go there. No, then and this was in Paris. So while she was there, she um had been like good meals and slept with um her clothes. Usually, like her blanket was to be like clothes piled on top on top of her. Okay. Then she met some someone named Marie Perry. Um, and then they got married and had two had two children, and his name was Perry um Curie, and their children's name were Evie and Irene. She. Then she started working with um, a rock that had lots of um, metals in it, and called pitch a blind. This is this is pitch a blind. Okay. Then she won. Then and and that material was radium. Then she won a Nobel Prize for their discovery of radium. And this is a picture of her winning the Nobel Prize. And then later she discovered polonium, which was also in the pitch of blind. And she won a Nobel Prize for that again. Then later she, she discovered two elements, polonium, one more element, polonium. And then she helped create the mobile x-ray. And that was the most, and that was a short summary of Marie Curie's life. Hello guys, and uh, this is my thing about Mae Jensen. She's an astronaut. Mae Jensen is working on a project within the next hundred years. Uh, it's like this uh human s space travel thing. Mae Jensen had a mission on the STS-47. It's a spaceship. May Jensen was the first African American to go to space. Can't believe she's the first. May Jensen is a scientist, a dancer, a doctor,
an author, a teacher, and an astronaut. Those are six things she had. She she went into orbit in 1992. She was born in 17 19 in 17 17 in 1956. Mae Jensen worked for NASA for six years. That's it, guys. Oh, I forgot to show you something. This is the closest thing I could get for my juice. Hey. Never mind that. Oh. Never mind her. Uh, that's everything. So, goodbye. Hello, it's me, Addison, and I'm going to be researching about Mary Dwyer, and I'm going to be telling her, you about her, so, yeah, let's, um, um, Ah, yes, I moved. So, you're going to be doing. I'm going to be telling you about Mary Blair. She was born on October t- t- the 21st, on uh, 19, 1911. The prop. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And Mary's family was poor, and she had a can't talk. Alcoholic, alcoholic fathers. No father. Why I say fathers? Why? Oh, she loved to paint, especially with watercolors. Then she moved to Texas, Texas when she was five. Why can't I talk? Anyway, Emerson, you better not come in here. <laughs> You just scared Emerson. I'm proud. Um, 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 um. She moved to Texas when she was five years old. Again, I'm saying that again. Later, when she went to, um, year. Wait. Years, years later, she went to John Art, John Yard Art Institute. I'm gonna call it that. Put, <clears throat> but when she drew stuff, people would judge it a lot. Although Walt Disney loved it. Woohoo! I would love it too. Let's see if I could show you a picture of a drawing, but no, I would. Let me see if I can find something in this book. I wonder. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So, well, let's see. Um, she loves to draw. Yeah, she loves to draw, as you can see, and beautiful. Anyway, um, she she left Disney in 1956 to illustrate children books. 
children books. I've read a children book before. Have you? Have you? Okay. Hmm. She. She died when she was 66 on July 26, 1978. Mary Blair will always be remembered. <laughs> Mary Blair will always be remembered. Now, pictures. Let's see. Okay, so if you go in this book, there's some pictures. Yeah, let me show you. She drew all of this stuff. Ah, she drew all of this. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah, a lot of stuff. And let's see what else. Yeah, she owns lots of glitter. 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 Ooh, that? Ooh, paper! I didn't know paper exists. Get back in there. So, yeah. I told you about Mary Blair and everything I know about her. No, that wasn't everything, but... So, bye, humans. See you in the classroom. Thank you for being a friend.